Welcome to the Inner Princess course guide to Tethy Station Hard on Walkabout Mini Golf. In this video, we'll take a look at the newest addition to the Walkabout course selection, examining the various routes, shots, and choices available to you. On the subject of choices, I would say that choice is the overriding theme for this course. Some of the holes give a number of options, each with their own merits and risks, and you, the player, are given the choice to approach these decisions in the way that suits your abilities, weaknesses, and level of ambition. As a team that strives to offer an exploration of risk and reward in their design, Mighty Coconut should be truly proud of what they have achieved in Tethy Station Hard. That said, this course is also pure evil. I don't know who to blame for it entirely, as Tethy Station is the first release of a talented course designer named Henning. But Mighty Coconut creator Lucas Martel took the lead for the night course, so it seems when these two combined forces, bad things happen and we should strive to keep them apart. Anyway, despite all the hype about choice, the par 3 hole 1 doesn't have a lot. Sight of the hole is blocked by a surrounding barrier, so your first shot is a pure test of weight and to a lesser degree, line. Once you've laid up your first shot beyond the barrier, you should have a straightforward yet still missable putt for birdie. If you happen to find yourself short of the barrier, don't try any fancy trick shots, it's just not worth it. Just take your sacrificial position shot and secure your par. The three sectioned hole two is another par three and gives you a choice of two main approaches. The first, as a test of weight, is to lay up to the middle section and hopefully leave a line to the hole through the central gap. Get this narrow margined first putt right and you've still got work to do as the second putt is a very missable length. The second option is more a test of line. If you can catch the inside edge of the first opening, you should send your ball on a bouncing path into the final third, leaving an easy putt for birdie too. Of course, if you get it wrong, there's no guarantee of a line to the hole. So, in general, if you favor weight, take option one. If you favor line, take option two. On we go to hole three, and there are so many ways to approach this one. Your goal is simple. Get your ball about two and a half meters to your left and into the cup. However, the reactor in front of you is now split and the outer path is littered with space junk. Rather than give you a recommendation of route here, I'll just talk you through some options and leave you to figure out which suits your style. The first eagle route is to rebound off the wall to your right and take a jump off the near side reactor wall. You have a chance at an eagle if you get this right, but you've got an angle to measure and then hit accurately as well as judging the pace. Route two is to go straight at the reactor wall, just before or after the split. There's a small target to aim for, but if you hit it right, you should leave an eagle putt. This is tricky and risky, as missing your spot will likely send you out of bounds one way or another. One slightly safer birdie route is to lay up close to the edge by the reactor, leaving an easier second shot to rebound onto the green. This rebound shot also has a chance of going in, so there's always the possibility you get lucky. The final route is to play around the outside of the reactor, and if you aim roughly here, you should bounce your way round to either leave a line at the hole or a clearer path to lay up for a birdie. Remember, if you don't have a line, you may still be able to go in off the side wall, so it's worth a go. And now we come to the dreaded hole four. If at this stage you're thinking, oh great, I've always wondered how to approach this one, I'm afraid you may not be any more certain after this guide. Starting on the upper deck, you've got a sheer drop from the tee down to the green below. Surrounding the cup are 18 hexagonal pyramids, and to make a decision en route, you first need to understand the safe zones and danger zones of this geometric layout. The easiest way to get past the shape formation is to use one of these lines, but you'll notice that none of them go into the hole. The next option is to position in one of these locations, and place straight up and over the center of one of the pyramids, but any deviation from straight will be exaggerated by the slope. If you want to get to the inner green in one, you should aim to bounce off this edge here, and you should snake your way close to or potentially into the hole. Get it even slightly wrong and you could be sent way off track though. An easier first shot is to lay up in line with either the left or right edge of the first mound. From here, you can either choose to play straight to the inner green for a par three, or take on the slopes for the birdie. Whatever you do, focus more on your weight than your line when crossing the shapes, as you want to make sure that if you're not in the cup, you've still got a clear sight of it. Of course, if you want to show off, just take a single bounce hop straight into the cup. Easy, right? Hole five requires you to cover quite a distance from tee to cup. 
and you do this by snaking along a corridor and out to a long straight cluttered with more space junk. A couple of angle deflectors help steer you around the bends, and there is even a gap under the final space hose, allowing for a route straight into the hole. With that in mind, there is a shot at the hole in one, simply by catching the angle right and giving a good solid strike. With great power though comes a great chance of error, so this may not be the percentage approach. My advice would be to play at a weight so as to leave your ball next to the second deflector. From here, you can take on the straight putt through the gap if you're feeling particularly spicy. If a birdie is sufficient, you can instead use the hose to deflect your ball over to the left, leaving you a clear sight of the cup. A note of advice here, if all goes wrong and you get trapped behind a hose, the walls are slightly angled, so you can play into them to chip your ball up and potentially pull off a round saving recovery shot. By now you should really see the theme of choice developing in this course without me hammering on about it, so you know what I'm about to say for hole 6. To get to the cup, you'll need to send your ball over a rotating three-way ramp, and there are two main ways to approach this. At a par 3, both should give you a chance at the birdie, so the decision should be made based on your preferred weight judgement and whether or not you want to try for a lucky hole in one. Route 1 is simply to roll up the ramp and calmly come down the next chute as your ball is steered towards the green. This is a fairly safe shot if you judge the weight right, but it is unlikely to go in. The more daring route is to jump the ramp, and the back walls are designed to deflect your ball cut bound via a side wall. Of course there's a risk of jumping straight out, but you can reduce this risk by aiming slightly off-centre on the entry ramp, which means you'll need less power in order to make the jump. You'll end up much closer to the hole this way, so if you're confident in the shot, this is the better way to go. The par 4 hole 7 continues the mental workout, as there are once again so many options to choose from. You start by playing over a convex curve into one of six tunnels. It's worth noting here that this hole is symmetrical, so really you have three tunnels and a choice of side. The green you're heading down to is a maze of blocks designed to compartmentalise your journey to the end where the cup is situated. This hole took a bit of practice to figure out before the Virtual Athletics League tournament, and there are a couple of ways I can suggest approaching it. If you want to bypass the tunnels altogether, you can use the ramps in between them to launch your ball. The pro here is that you can bounce all the way to the cup in one. The con is that you're required to be fairly precise on both line and weight, and if you go wrong there's a good chance you'll end up out of bounds and back where you started with an extra stroke against your name on the scorecard. To save me waffling on, there are a lot of alternatives here, each with their own pros and cons, so I'll just focus on the route which I think on balance has the best risk and reward ratio. I prefer to aim just left or right of the middle block into one of the most central tunnels. And the guide for the weight is that you want the ball to bounce once on the base of the tunnel before launching onto the green. If you get this right, you'll either make it all the way to the end or at least have bypassed a few of the early sections of the green. If you play this too strong and miss your bounce inside the tunnel, you'll catch a deflection off the first block and into a sneaking out of bounds hidden under the upper tier. Of course, if you don't have a clear shot at the birdie after your tee shot, Make sure you play with enough power to give your ball a chance at bouncing in off the back wall. It took me a long time to like hole 8 and I finally decided it's not hole 8 I dislike, just Henning. You can't blame this hole on Lucas's hard course intervention, as it's just the easy course backwards, but there's a level of unavoidable uncertainty which is relatively unseen in the other 215 holes currently available in Walkabout. The hole is set across four bunkers nestled into the outer rock which houses a number of later holes in the course. The tee starts you in the top bunker and you'll need to follow the dogleg path to the right to reach the final fourth bunker. And now comes decision time. How big are your gentlemen or lady spuds? At a par 5 there are routes to attempt an albatross, routes for an eagle, routes for a birdie and plenty of opportunities to go way over par. Before attempting this hole, I recommend you ask yourself what you truly want to achieve and then pick your shot accordingly. Let's start with the obvious and go bunker to bunker. If you aim to land your first bounce in the second bunker, you'll probably go straight up and over the back wall as there's little to contain your ball. Because of this, the safest way to settle in bounds is to play into the rock between T and bunker 2. This is fairly clutter free and shouldn't take any nasty deflections. From here, you have a bit of a percentage shot to play when facing the third and fourth bunkers. Playing to the rocks between bunker 2 and 3 is complicated by some sticky outy troublemakers, so I don't advise relying on that area. Instead, you'll notice a fairly reliable stone covering the back edge of bunker 3. If 
you play to land your first bounce in that bunker, the stone will aid two possible positive outcomes. You may hit it and deflect back into bunker three, ready for your third shot, or you may even catch an angle deflection and send your ball heading for the green with a reasonable chance of making it safely on to leave a shot at the eagle. Now for the other available shortcuts. To get to the green in one, you can aim to bounce around here, and to skip just the second bunker, you can aim to bounce here. Bear in mind though, both of these shots have a narrow margin for error and missing your mark means an almost certain out of bounds. We finish the front nine with a chance to mentally unwind from the run of brain teasers you've just endured. This design falls under the category of hole in one or bust. You sit atop a platform looking out into the deep, dark and empty void which is your meaningless existence. Sorry, I mean which is space. Out in front of you is the cup and a convenient pad to act as a go-between. I say convenient, but you'll notice the pad is slightly offset to the left and rotated slightly clockwise. This means that you have a little less usable surface than you may initially think. Fun fact! Shooting stars are not actually specks of burning space dust, they are golf balls flying through space after tee shots are missed on this hole. Anyway, if you're going to miss, I'll bet money that you'll miss short and to the right, and this is because of the offset placement of the bouncing board. So line up your shot, judge your weight, then aim further left and hit a little harder than you were planning to. If you do hit the bounce board, you're almost guaranteed the hole in one, so just make sure you get that bit right. Oh, and there's 10 princess points for whoever first hits it straight into the hole pod and into the cup without using the bounce board, so there's your next daily challenge. This concludes the front nine and one of the most complex nine holes in the game. I hope you've gained a few ideas or pointers from this video. I recommend getting into practice mode to try some of the routes out, as competition and match play is no time for experimenting on a course like this. I'll see you soon for the back nine. Please join the Discord or Facebook groups if you haven't already. Like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel for future content and drop me a comment if you have anything to ask or add.